Hey everybody, welcome back. It's patch 8.5 and this time I'm going to show you a different variation of AD phase rush tiger stance that we haven't done before on the channel. This time our core items will be death stance and phantom dancer and the most interesting reason these items are a good combo, both of these items have a damage mitigation passive. Death's dance passive takes 30% of all damage you take from all enemies except for true damage and it stores it and then you take a percentage of the sword damage over time instead of in one burst. Phantom Dancer's passive reduces the damage dealt of the most recent enemy champion that you hit by 12%. All in all, it makes for a very strong one versus one build. And one more reason why this build is fun to me, Phantom Dancer gives you even more movement speed on top of phase rush so you can be ridiculously fast. It gives you 12% movement speed when you're nearby enemies, as well as ignored unit collision, which means you are immune to minion block. So when is a good time to use Phase Rush? Well, I really think it's good every single game, regardless of the enemy team comp, but if you are against certain enemy champions, Phase Rush is especially strong and it can basically be a counter pick. If the enemy team has a strong kiting champion like Vayne, Callista, or Cassiopeia, Phase Rush would be a strong pick. If the enemies have a lot of skill shot abilities that you can sidestep with high movement speed like Lux, Velkaz, or Xerath, Phase Rush would be a strong pick. For the other runes, we're taking Mana Flow Band. This is very useful on Udyr whenever you don't have blue buff. It could be a lifesaver. Celerity for more movement speed and converting some of our movement speed into damage. And since we have so much movement speed with this build, that seems like a good idea. Water walking helps us run between lanes quickly when we're running through the river. Also gives us more damage when we're contesting objectives. And then secondary, I would recommend precision because since patch 8.4, you now get attack speed by taking precision secondary with either sorcery or domination primary. And then the regular triumph and alacrity. So there are two different build options that I'll show you. Many of you Udyr mains are probably familiar with the classic Tiamat or no Tiamat debate? Well, I'm gonna make it easy for everyone. If you're a fan of Tiamat, this is a build order you should follow. Start with Rejuvenation Bead level 1 so you can try to get the Tiamat for the first recall. Then build your core items, the Death Dance and Phantom Dancer. Right after that, you should upgrade your Titanic Hydra because that's gonna make you pretty tanky because you can think of your damage mitigation passives from your two other items as fake armor and magic resist because that's basically what they're gonna do mathematically. They're gonna synergize well with your health items, so if you have a Titanic Hydra like this, it's sorta like having armor and magic resist with it. You would choose the Tiamat option if you wanna have a faster jungle clear, which could give you a level advantage just by farming, and this is basically gonna give you less burst damage than the warrior option, but it's gonna give you a better late game. The warrior option you would take if you wanna have more burst damage for easier kills in the early game for an easier snowball. The downside is if you don't get the early kills, you could fall behind and it has slower farming than with Tiamat, so it could be a little bit more risky. Rush Warrior as soon as possible. You want to get that first item because it's 60 attack damage and it's very cheap. Then after finishing your Phantom Dancer, you would want to build a health defensive item. So you would start with a Spectre's Cowl or Giant's Belt. So when choosing your boots, if the enemy team is very heavy magic damage, then you definitely want to get the mercs, or if they're almost all physical damage, then you definitely want to get the ninja tabby. Only get the swiftness boots if you're extremely fed, but most of the time you probably want to just get your defensive boots. And of course, merc treads is also good against a lot of CC. In the late game, as I said, you want to prioritize the health items first, so if the enemy team is mostly physical, you want to start with either a randuins or a dead man's plate. Or if the enemy team is mostly magic damage, you want to start with a Spirit Visage or Adaptive Helm. Spirit Visage is pretty good on this build because it will give you increased healing on Death Stance. For the first clear, it's the same as always, but I'll just go ahead and explain it real quick. Start level 1 with an early Tiger Stance before blue buff spawns, and you always want to start with blue buff. When blue buff spawns, you want to attack it once and then activate another Tiger Stance so you can get a double Tiger proc. On blue team, I always try to steal the enemy red buff after my blue, so I just leave a ward in the raptor bush and then steal the red, and I either kill the enemy jungler when they show up, or I steal their raptors to get level 3 bear stance, which I use to gank mid lane. 
red team go from blue buff to wolves to red and then you can either gank top or mid lane or just invade the enemy blue buff and sometimes you can find the enemy jungler before they finish off their blue buff and you can try to smite it or you can try to kill them because they will probably not be full health and you will be full health so let's start off with warrior gameplay first because i always do tmat videos anyways so we'll save the tmat until after warrior so let's try to get this first blood on Fiora. So every time I gank somebody, I'm going to make sure to position myself in the direction that they want to run. We get her flash. We're easily going to be able to catch up to her with this movement speed from phase rush. We get one more stun, and that's first blood. So let's check if the enemy jungler is still over here. Over here taking his gromp. So I'm just going to grab this gromp. I'm just going to try to outsmite him. So my smite is 430, so I left click on gromp and watch the health in the very top left of the screen. And I give him a little thumbs up. I think it makes people chase you a little bit more if you do that. And that's kind of helpful. Attack him four times in Tiger Stance so you can get two procs before switching back to Bear Stance. Then back to Tiger Stance again and he's dead. We still got more than half of our health too. So then I was up here farming top lane and here comes the Skarner. He's full health but he's two levels down. Since I'm low health, I just went for one attack in Tiger. Bear Stance, and then went straight to Turtle Stance. Went into the bush, waited for my Bear Stance to be back off cooldown. Flash on him, Tiger into Bear Stance. That's going to be enough money to get our Warrior and Basic Boots for our first recall. So we're going to have a lot more burst damage than we already had. Warrior Power Spike is really big, so now we're just going to try to dive these guys in bot lane. Going to go for that Yasuo first. Look at this, Alistar knocks me out of tower range. Yasuo ults me, but I'm not under tower anymore, so it does like no damage. So I just run back into tower, finish off the Alistar with that red buff burn, and then turn around and finish off the Yasuo too. Completely underestimated my damage. And that's pretty much how it usually goes with AD Tiger Stance. Enemy jungler's up in top lane, just killed my top laner. Look at this, after we stun him, we keep moving in the direction he wants to go. He has no chance of getting away from that. There's nothing he can do. First of all, he's not going to survive for more than three seconds. Like, what are you going to do against that? You can try to use flash, I'm just going to stun you again. You can exhaust me, I'm still going to catch you. So here we saw the Skarner in top lane walking towards Tribush. Janna kind of baited him, so he looked at Janna. Then I pop out, surprise him, stun him, and he's dead in a couple seconds. And now, Baron just spawned, and I'm seriously thinking about soloing this Baron. I'm only level 14, but I've got 16 kills, so I swept Baron, made sure it was not warded, and I grabbed Scuttle. Alistar shows up, quickly take this guy out. The healing from Death Dance is going to give us enough to survive and also the armor from Randuin's is going to make sure we don't take very much damage. You could probably do it with mostly full health at the end but I was focusing more on using Tiger Stance instead of using a lot of Turtle Stance procs. So I was going for that massive 2000 damage Tiger Burn so I could feel really good about myself. Went to base, enemy Yasuo is pushing bot lane. Just run up to this Yasuo. Before he can even react, he's dead. And that's going to trigger the Surrender Vote. And that's the end of the first game. Now let's move on to another game. This is also with Warrior, but I had a lot of early deaths. And I just wanted to show you a little comparison versus the Super Fed game. I don't have Smite, so I'm not going to really be able to get this red buff. But I'm just going to try to kill this guy because he's pretty low. So he focuses on red buff. Stun him, switch to Tiger Stance. So he goes over the wall. He's going for the plant. So I flash for the plant just in time and we got another stun another tiger stance and the burn finishes him off okay fast forward a few more minutes i'm three four and three now but i'm gonna try to one versus two this bot lane because i have my warrior complete and i got a pickaxe so one versus two no problem so i hit the nami with one tiger proc and there goes about a third of her health so i know that i can kill her with like one more stun so i'm Trying to just pretend like I'm running away to get her to leave her tower for just long enough so I can have enough distance to catch her. So after she does, turn around, bear stance, and then tiger stance. And it's that easy. So now we got our level 9, pick up our oracle. Picked up some armor with ninja tabby because the enemy team is mostly physical damage. At least the strong champions. So always look out for those potential counter build items. 
Malphite engages on Volley Bear. You're pretty fast, Volley Bear, but I'm pretty fast too. One more stun. You know the rest. That's another kill. So now we get this tower. I'm pretty low on mana, but the enemy jungler shows up. I stun him once, switch to Tiger Stance. But then I gotta run away. So I use my flash to survive. But I'm still waiting here to maybe go back in because now they're both getting pretty low. So I might have enough health to just run in there and get that last hit. So there goes Kane's flash and we do get that last hit. So now here comes the enemy mid laner. So I have enough mana for one ability usage. And luckily that Twisted Fate focused the Malphite and not me. So since I was already in Bear Stance, just stun him and then use the last mana that I had to use Tiger Stance. This team fight here was pretty good. Started out with the Kane engaging a little bit too deep on us. So we get that pick. And now I'm going for the ADC. Really fast because Phase Rush just activated. Twisted Fate, Gold Cars, and Minion. Then I stun Twisted Fate, Flash stun the Caitlyn, and then stun the Nami. And look at all of that healing that I got. Even though I was so low, I thought I was going to have to leave tower range. But then I healed up so much from Triumph and Death Dance. And here comes our last guy, the Volid Bear, trying to finish off that low health squishy Udir. He doesn't realize that I got my double damage mitigation, so I'm not going to take any damage. I'm just going to heal through all of it. And that's an ace. Alright, so now let's move on to some Tiamat gameplay. I was going to try to gank this Kled, but he's not very pushed, so that's not going to happen. But then I'm like, well, I'm just going to go through tower. I know I can get through by only taking two tower hits, one tiger proc and bear stance. And that's our first blood. Then, trying to gank bot lane. So we don't have our support here right now. So we notice a ward in that bush, but then it just expired. So now we know it's not warded. And the enemies have a false sense of security because they just had a ward right there. But now we're going to be able to sneak in, try to focus down the ADC first. We get her flash, heal, we get an exhaust, but we still kill them both. Just think about that. So even though Caitlyn uses flash, net, and heal and I get exhausted, I'm still able to keep up because of phase rush. Let's try to get this mid lane now. So I activated turtle stance before the bear stance. Again, we just stun this guy and we burst him down. Found the enemy J4 over here near my blue buff, so had to kill him. That's unacceptable. Bear stance, four attacks in tiger stance, and that second tiger proc finishes him off. Then I do a full clear of the jungle from blue to red, and then grab rift. Moving towards the enemy blue buff now, and look who we find over here. It's the J4. So now, gonna get payback for him trying to steal my blue buff, even though I already got payback. Now he's gonna die again. And now I'm getting his blue buff too. What are we gonna try to kill now? I guess it's gotta be the mid laner. So we're gonna try to dive this guy. Just gonna run into the tower, stun him, Q plus TM mat. And then at this point in the game, I have my Titanic and Phantom Dancer done, so you can see what this looks like now. So, team fight here. These guys are all grouped up and looking at them all taking a lot of damage from that AoE. So, we have great AD burst damage against Squishies, but you also have attack speed, you have AoE for multi targets, and you have health. So, you can be pretty tanky. You have healing, you have like everything. You just don't have a lot of CDR and mana. That's the only thing. Alright, let's take a look at another TM mat game. So here finishing off my level 3 red buff and deciding if I want to gank top or mid lane. And when I was at mid lane, decided that this guy was not pushed enough, so then we're just gonna invade. We can pop over this wall. There's the enemy jungler at his Gromp. Smite the Gromp, and he's only level 2, so I'm just gonna try to kill this guy. Again, bear stance and tiger stance, try to move between every attack to stay in range. And that gives us just enough damage to finish him off before he can get to tower. So we run in behind this Vigar, and then after he flashes, I know I'm going to get that kill if I use my flash. So I go ahead and use mine. And then, let's try bot lane. We have a control ward here, so I know it's not warded. Lulu comes to ward the bush, and I hit her with a double tiger proc. Massive damage. And she's dead. Now, since we're already in bear stance, stun this ADC before switching to tiger stance to finish her off. Now we're going to dive mid. Bear Stance, Tiger Stance, and Turtle Stance. Drop out of Tower Aggro. Look at this Lulu right here. 
She thinks she's gonna kill me, right? Because I'm low health, but I have Death's Dance. So she ignites me, she ults, but still, I have enough healing from Turtle Stance and Death's Dance to tank it all. Timo's got himself into a fight. Let's try to run over here and pick up some kills. When that Vigar uses Zonia's, I just gotta switch my focus to the ADC. So that's two enemies down, and here comes the third one. So now we're going to push down this tower to activate this Rook Herald. Then we got a mid lane tower too. Here comes a low health Urgot. So I just engage on this guy with Barris Hands. It's so easy to catch up to these people. Like, nobody's ever going to get away from you. Like, I haven't been outrun by anybody with this build. Once you get the Phantom Dancer done. Take out a Fire Drake. And the team fight is about to happen. I get hit by the Vigar Cage, but that Zillion Ult is going to save me. Then after that, the Volley Bear is chasing pretty deep, so we just collapse on this guy and finish him off. Now the Urgot is over here kind of isolated, so we focus this guy next, and then move on to the next closest person. Then they're running for their life. Now we're just going to catch up to this guy. But the Lulu is going to get away. But now we got the mid inhib. We're going to move up to top lane now and take that one too. And here comes the ADC, thinking she's going to be able to fight this Udyr. Pagastance and Tiamat, and that's all it takes. Now we stun the next two guys. Team comes in, does a lot of burst damage. That's the end of that game. So, for the final game I'm going to show you, this was a very difficult game to win. We are losing early, and I was able to win the game by split pushing. And I actually didn't have a Tiamat. Normally, if you want to split push, the Tiamat is essential to help you clear the minions. But what I actually did was use one level in Phoenix Stance as replacement. So I got one kill. The enemy ADC has already got three kills. There goes our ADC. It's a one versus two right here, but I noticed that they're both out of mana and they're both squishy. Flash on the Nami first because Varus was further behind. So if I went for Varus with the Flash, the Nami might have been able to escape. But since I went for the Nami first, that gave me enough time to actually get the Varus too. Here, I should have gone for that kill right there because I really think I could have beat that guy. So we got a 300 gold shutdown on the Varus for our team. But then, fast forward a few minutes later, enemy Varus is on another killing spree. Let's try to get another shutdown. Get another shutdown on Varus. This time, 350 gold for our team. So everybody on the team gets 20%. Over here I found this J4 recalling. Look how fast I can burst this guy down. Let's just dive mid lane again because that's the only person left over here. So I just flash, tiger, and then bear stance. You can start with tiger stance because somebody's probably not going to react and flash away in that half a second before you use bear stance. So you could get a little bit extra damage if you go tiger stance and then bear stance. And then you can go back to tiger stance. So now we're 7-0, and no, but the enemy ADC is getting pretty fed too. So I pick up the Ninja Tabby for the Varus. It's only for the Varus. Oh, speaking of Varus, there goes another double kill right there. So hopefully, late game, we just have to burst down that Varus and we can win. But for now, I don't really want to team fight because that's just going to accelerate the pace of the game and currently, we're going to lose team fights. So I think we're going to have a better chance of winning if I can split push and just pray that my teammates can kill the minions enough so the enemies can't push as fast as I can because I'm fed enough to one versus one anybody right now. So we get two towers down, here comes the enemy jungler, but look at that three level advantage I got. He's not even going to try to attack me. I pretend like I'm walking away, but then he jumps back in to kill minions when I leave. Then I come back in, try to burst him down, get his flash, Maokai uses ult, and now I'm just going to try to kill this Maokai too. So they sent two people down here. Meanwhile, they didn't even get a tower up in top lane. Gangplank's able to hold off those guys. And now look at this. My teammates are running up there to give reinforcements up in top lane. They get a kill on the Varus, and they push down a tower up in top lane. All four of the remaining enemies go up there. And enemy Varus is still dead for 20 seconds, so I'm going to take this time to grab this in hip tower. Enemy Varus comes back to life, so then he's going to chase me away from in hip. And then my teammates get another tower up in top lane. So that little split push actually just really got our team a lot of money. A lot of global gold from all of those towers. So now we got our Phantom Dancer complete. 
And for the late game defense, we're going to start with health. So since I want armor, I'm going to start with a giant's belt because I could be built into either dead man's or randuin's. So again, running down towards bot lane, they push this wave, killing the minions with alternating tiger stance and phoenix stance for the fastest clear. And Mivaris gets another double kill, but they're stuck in a team fight now, so I just make a sprint for inhib. Then after this, I notice the mid lane tower is low health, so I'm just going to run in here, use sweeper. It's not warded, so I'm just going to run in here and try to grab this tower. A little bit more global gold for my team. And now we're grouping up around Baron because we're going for a big play now, because we got the bot lane and hip down. There's four enemies right here by blue buff, but then the Maokai is kind of split up from them. He's trying to flank us. He probably is more confident than he should have been because he probably thinks that since they're so far ahead in kills he's gonna go for the flank and it's just gonna win the team fight well it didn't work out for his four teammates and he ended up in a one versus five so now after that we can Baron and look at the enemies they all have to go back to base to defend so that's why we can go for the Baron even though we're still down in kills and since we already got bot now it's time to go top lane so here comes the enemy Varus, and he hits me with a slow, so I panic thinking I'm going to die, and I just decide to commit and flash for that Varus, because I know that if I can just kill that guy before I die, at least nobody else on the enemy team is going to be strong enough to do anything. But meanwhile, it was definitely worth it, because Gangplank gets a first Nexus Tower right there. My teammates all push mid lane with Baron buff, they grab the mid lane and Hib, so that's two in Hibs down. And I'm on my way back from base, but it looks like they're already able to handle themselves. All of that global gold really paid off. And that is going to be the end of this guide. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about the build. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. I had to skip last week's upload because it was finals week, final exams. But now the school semester is over, so I'm going to upload three videos this week. Keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you again next time.